a huge undertaking. It's a, uh, a 2,000 mile round trip for us to get up to Sydney, then do the race, then get the boat back to Melbourne. Um, and you know, uh, Bass Strait in the middle of winter in a small boat, it's not all that, that, that much fun. So it is a big, very big commitment um, by us and particularly by the, the guys and the crew. Um, we're in pretty good shape. We, um, we got struck by lightning in February in Melbourne, the boat sitting in the pen, uh, which took out all our electrics. So we've been madly getting that repaired. It was amazing, sitting in its pen. I mean, we don't get much lightning in Melbourne. You know, 140 masts, they managed to choose ours. <laughs> Um, yeah, mainly mainly the electrics just basically melted them. So it uh, <clears throat> wasn't what we needed, but um, you know, these things happen. We haven't had much opportunity for um, competitive sailing over the last few weeks. Uh, we did the Geelong Regatta and did well on that. But that was way back in the end of January. So we're a little rusty, um, but we will use the trip up uh, as a bit of a training run. We've got pretty much the whole race crew to, to do that. In 2018, we won it. Um, really in conditions that didn't quite suit our boat. We just got very, very lucky with some breeze at night. Um, it wasn't a hard running race, which is what we, we like. Uh, but we, yeah, we, we managed to jag it in 2018. So. Yeah, it's a funny race. It's an unusual race. We thought uh, Matt and the, the, the TPs had got ahead of us uh, a fair way. Um, so sort of two th or halfway through the race, we thought um, it wasn't going to be our sort of size uh, race. Um, we thought we were doing pretty well against um, boats of our size. Um, but then the, the bigger boats did a bit of parking. I think it must have been the second night. Um, and we just managed to, um, we got really, almost put the wheels down and got on the beach um, for about five hours on the second night uh, and just seemed to have a really good sail combination and um, our own private breeze and um, um, yeah, managed, managed to, to do it well. But it, look, it was a, a light and fairly fluky race. I think it was a very typical uh, Southport race. Uh, we then sort of sweated for a while while the SNS 34 came trundling along, but um, thankfully they didn't get in, you know, in time. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a pretty, a pretty typical Sydney Southport race. Oh, I've been a bridesmaid lots of times, mate. <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we sort of see the Gold Coast race as the, the second biggest race on the calendar. Um, you know, we've come second on the Hobart a few times and uh, yeah, to knock off the Gold Coast uh, was, was good. So yeah, no, that gave us some pleasure. And it was with the, the regular, you know, the regular bunch of guys. We're all getting a bit old, but um, you know, if we get, get the right conditions, we can, we can still do all right. Initially, I thought it was a bit of a Mickey, Mickey Mouse race and it seemed a hell of a long way to go for sort of a 350 mile race, but um, the more we've done it, the more we've got sort of sucked into it. Um, it's really a very tricky race uh, because the the strip that you're sailing is so very narrow. You know, you've got the current, if you go out to sea, you've really got to get smart with the, um, the breeze at different times of the day and the night right on the coast. And because it's such a narrow, um, a narrow strip, it means there's very little opportunity for sort of creating leverage against your competitors. So if you're going to Hobart, you can take a 30 mile flyer out to the east and suddenly you've either got great leverage or you've lost a bucket load. But this is a different sort of race. It's, um, it's a narrow strip, there's not many passing lanes and there's an awful lot of parking, parking lots often. It's probably the 10th or 12th time I think we've done it. Um, we had some fabulous racing back in the early 2000s doing it when there, when I, I, I had a Sydney 38 and there's a whole bunch of us that really turned into a drag, a one design drag race for us. That was, that was terrific. Um, I think it was 2000 or maybe, maybe um, 1999, it was a very fast downwind race. And we sort of had that stitched up till we got to Danger Rocks just before the finish. and. Uh, 
we got a bit conservative and went out to sea around them and that, that killed us. I think it's a race also where you can just about throw your computer away. You know, going to Hobart these days, we all get obsessed with what the routing is, but um, there's so many sort of little local influences right on the coast, particularly if it's a light race, that I think most of the computer programming is um, you've got to throw out the window and you've got to start looking, looking at the, the clouds and the water and what's happening on the beach. So it's an unusual race, but it's a big undertaking for us to do it from Melbourne. The Hobart last year was good for us, particularly the first uh, two thirds. I think we're in really good shape um, after 30 odd hours when we got a bit we got a bit stuck uh, at the sort of northern end of Tassie where the where the wind went really soft. But we we had a lot of lot of fun against some of our divisional boats, which were bigger than us. Um, Margaret Rentoul and um, Maritimo, uh, both of which are ten, 10 foot bigger than us, and we managed to uh, uh, sail pretty well against them. So uh, the, the Hobart was a good race for us. Um, but oh, you know, I still think there's a, there's a bad one waiting out there for us somewhere. It seems to have been so long before we've had a really hard southerly, and uh, I, don't, I don't want it to happen, but I suspect uh, the laws of averages would suggest it's going to happen. Boat now is getting quite, you know, very old, really. Um, but it still seems to be competitive. It was quite radical when it was uh, first designed. It was always going to be my last boat, and um, we told them just to make it as fast as you could, and really not worry too much about the rating. And you know, over the over the last sort of five or six years, a number of the forty footers are now looking more and more like um, like we are, which uh, is I think is a credit to the designers that they could sort of pick it. Um, at a very early stage. We still really struggle when it's um, moderate breeze upwind. Uh, the boat certainly isn't really designed for that. It, it, it was never meant to be. So we really struggle against, say, the, the, the DK46s or some of the newer Benetos. Uh, we just can't hold our rating anywhere near them. But really light stuff and um, reaching and running, we're in reasonally good shape, particularly if it blows. You know, we're not as familiar with that coast as the guys from Sydney. I mean, they're up and down it the whole time. They know every little bay and how far to go and to smell the barbecues at night and that sort of thing. Um, so we're, we're, we're learning each time we do it, but um, it's a lot of fun. And um, we're hoping for a good hard running race, but uh, I suspect it might be fairly light. You, you never stop learning and, and the Gold Coast race is a great example of that. You never stop learning on, on, on that race. It's, uh, you don't set, set it and forget it. It's changing constantly. And with that narrow band, that to me is the, uh, the real challenge. You know, you stick your nose out 200 metres too far and you'll start going backwards. If you get right up on the beach at the right time, you can get some one, wonderful wind. But if you stay there too long, uh, you'll get becalmed when the sun comes up. <laughs> so it's... Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an intriguing race rather than a demanding race from a sort of survival point of view.